Also tonight, GSP Plus benefits. Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe says with the grant, Sri Lanka's economy will strengthen through exports. Political drama. Two more new ministers takes oath at the North Central Provincial Council. A new scanner. President assures that the procurement of the PET CT scanner for the Apeksha Hospital will be expedited. And in international headlines, Trump-Russia links. Russian President Vladimir Putin offers to release records of the meeting. Good evening, Mahesh Johnny with Other Than a 24-7. Tonight we begin with another protest from the Inter-University Students Federation. Police arrested several university students and fired tear gas to disperse crowds who were protesting in defiance of a court order issued by the Colombo Chief Magistrates Court. Police took measures to disperse the protesters while they were marching towards the University Grants Commission in Colombo. Calling for the South Asian Institute of Technology and Medicine to be abolished, a protest march was organized by the Inter-University Students' Federation starting from the Fort Railway Station at noon today. At the launch of the protest, police attempted to hand over the court order issued by the Colombo Chief Magistrates' Court yesterday, preventing the protest by university students in Colombo. The protesters, however, refused to accept the court order. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Colombo additional magistrate refused a request made by the police to issue a prohibition order preventing the protest march. As a result of the march, the police took measures to close the Lotus Road leading up to the presidential secretariat during afternoon hours. As protesters reached the Ibanwala Junction on the way to the University Grants Commission, police halted the march using barricades and anti-riot vehicles. Police attempted once again to hand over the court order to university students. <laughs> With protesters refusing to accept the court order for a second time, police used tear gas to disperse the university students adjacent the Vihara Mahadevi Park in Town Hall. We took to the streets today to answer those who are trying to protest Saitam. We cannot be stopped. We will go into the ministries of those who said they would stop us. Police used tear gas for a second time as the protesters attempted to regroup outside the Nelum Pokanama in the Rajapaksa theatre. Police spokesperson SSP Priyantha Jayakodi speaking to other Dirana said that eight persons who disturbed peace during the protest march this evening were arrested and will be produced in court soon. Seven people and one reverend monk 
were arrested uh, during the student agitation for breaking the law and disturbing to the general public trust obstructing to the public servants and they were action will be taken to produce them before colombo magistrate during this agitation five police officers injured and they were admitted to police hospital narahem peter they are under treatment uh, now the this uh, the uh, crowd were dispersed and now the traffic uh, become very normal Also staying in the story, meanwhile, several trade unions, including the Government Medical Officers Association, are gearing up for a joint trade union action in the near future. A discussion on the matter was held at the headquarters of the GMOA today. The discussion on the joint trade union action was conducted with the participation of trade union members representing various sectors, including health, transport, education, port, electricity, as well as petroleum. Today, a lot of trade unions came together again. We had a decisive discussion on the struggle to abolish CITA. Members from a lot of fields expect to resort to a strike and we are planning to make the public aware of it. This is the first time. We will come to our final decisions regarding CITAM by the 29th. We are hoping to make the public aware of this process. Preparations are underway for a series of trade union action. The reason is that the government is holding an arbitrary stance without considering the opinions of others. In other headline stories, Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe says the government will ensure a conducive policy environment for investors and exporters in order to reap maximum benefits of the European Union GSP Plus trade facility. The Prime Minister was speaking at the inauguration ceremony of the Women's Leadership Summit 2017 in Colombo this morning. The Women's Leadership Summit 2017 was inaugurated under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh. Organized by the Sark Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the summit saw the participation of over 200 delegates, including entrepreneurs, policymakers and think tanks from the Sark region. Day-long deliberations were held aiming at addressing issues related to women's empowerment and economic development in the Sark region. Addressing the summit, Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh spoke on Sri Lanka's plan of becoming an export economy. On day after, we will get tariff concessions to enter the European Union market. Now we are looking at the limited range, the apparel product range, fisheries product range. Now we must look at broadening it. We can't do all 6,000. We will ask the existing exporters to utilize this, leverage this uh, concession to increase the export volume and the export earnings. We will ask our domestic manufacturers to become exporters. And our job is to encourage them not only to go into Europe, but to other markets. Two North Central Provincial Councillors of the UPFA took oaths as Provincial Ministers today. North Central Provincial Councillor of the UPFA, Sarath Ilangasinghe, took oaths as the Minister of Irrigation, Land, Rural Development and Women's Affairs. The portfolio was previously held by H.B. Semasinghe. Meanwhile, UPFA Provincial Councillor Sampat Sri Nilantha took oaths before the Governor of the North Central Province as the Minister of Agriculture, Agro-Products, Marketing, Animal Production, Animal Health, Fisheries and Housing Affairs. The portfolio was previously held by RMPB Rapnaika. The decision by the Governor of the North Central Province to dismiss Provincial Minister K. H. Nandasena from his ministerial post on the 10th of May set off a chain reaction. S. M. Ranjit resigned from his ministerial post in protest of the decision. Susil Gunaratna yesterday took oath before the Governor of the North Central Province, P. B. Disanayaka, as the new Minister of Transport, Sports, Youth Affairs, Cooperative, Trade and Food and Industrial Development. Sarat Ilangasinghe took oath in the presence of the Governor of North Central Province, P.B. Disanayaka, earlier today. UPFA Provincial Councillor of the Polonaro District, Sampat Sri Nilantha, took oath as the Minister of Agriculture, Agro-Product Marketing, Animal Production, Animal Health, Fisheries and Housing Affairs today. Susil Gunaratna, Sarat Ilangasinghe and Sampat Sri Nilantha are among the 17 North Central Provincial Councillors who produced affidavits against the Chief Minister Peshla Jaratna. In other local stories, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa challenges the government to hold an election, saying the government is afraid to do so. The former president's remarks came following the funeral of parliamentarian Ranjit Soisa's father in Gotagavela today. 
then September mass in Uta. Sabaragamua, North Central and Eastern Provincial Councils must be dissolved by September. We hope the elections will be held and people will be able to exercise their right to vote. That's because they are afraid. They always say that they will win the elections. If they are going to win, it is easy for them to hold the elections. <laughs> it is only a joke. In one of our headline stories, President Maitripala Sirisena has given instructions today to expedite the procurement process of a PET CT scanner for the Apeksha Hospital in Maharagama. The President gave instructions in response to a written request made by the Manusa Derana team, which cited the delay in the process. Manusa Derana. A Peksha hospital in Maharagama initiated the project to collect funds from a much-needed PET CT scanner which is used in regular tests for cancer patients as well as to identify the type of cancer. After months of struggle, however, the hospital could only collect 6 million rupees, although 200 million rupees were required to purchase the machine. At that time, officials of the Apeksha hospital requested Manu Saddarana to join the project. With Manusat Dirana's decision to extend its cooperation, thousands of generous hearts reached out from across the world, leading to the accumulation of more than 240 million rupees in funds. Later on the 27th of February, appearing on Dirana 360 program, Minister of Health Dr. Rajita Senaratna revealed that the ministry will complete the tender process to import a PET CT scanner. All of you managed the marketing of this project for free. That is why people were interested in this initiative and provided so much of funds. I checked recently and the tender process is now complete. We'll provide this machine to the country in a few days following technical evaluation. Project Chairman of Manusat Dharana, Mahesh Jamardana, however, in a letter to President Maitripala Sirisena noted there was a delay in the tender process with regard to the procurement of the scanner, highlighting that a year has passed since the process began. In his letter, the Project Chairman also requested the President to expedite the installment of a scanner at the Apeksha Hospital. Responding to the Project Chairman, Mahesh Jamardana, President Maitripala Sirisena pledged his fullest support for the project. The Derana Media Network extends gratitude to President Maitripala Sivisena for taking prompt measure to address the request. We will continue to pay close attention to the matter until a PET CT scanner is installed at the Apeksha Hospital. Welcome back everyone. A Sri Lankan IT product distributor is confident that they have introduced an antivirus software which is capable of combating the ransomware WannaCry virus. The ma massive cyber attack which was originally believed to have been developed by the US National Security Agency has affected more than 200,000 victims over 150 countries causing major disruptions in hospitals, companies and government agencies. The virus took control of users' files demanding payments. Russia and the United Kingdom were among the worst hit countries. The Sri Lankan Computer Emergency Readiness Team also warned that this cyber attack still poses a threat to Windows computers in Sri Lanka that have not applied the latest security updates. Division manager of Synetcom Private Limited, Nuan Gunatilaka, however, says newly introduced Intercept X software can detect the malfunctions and is capable of reverting the infected system to its original state. Sophos has come up with a beautiful product which is called the Intercept X and uh, it uh, basically cures and detects and then it stops and then it has the uh, possibility of reverting back to uh, the original state of the files. When you install uh, ransomware protection through uh, Sophos, it will decrypt whatever the uh, effective files in a a machine or it, and also it will help IT administrator of a company to find the root cause analysis by finding where it has come from and what are the computers which have been affected through the uh, ransomware threat and also uh, critical information is being stored in the uh, server so the server is always vulnerable so for next generation's uh, server protection uh, for the ransomware is a newly introduced product
On to business news now. As Sri Lankan exporters aware his re-entrance to the 28-member European Union market with the preferential duty-free treatment of GSP Plus starting Friday, Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva invites both local and foreign investors to set up factories here. Dr. Harsha De Silva said apparel, fisheries and rubber sectors will be able to make immediate use of GSP Plus in order to expand shipments to the EU. Our exporters have been getting ready for some time now. We have been talking to the industrialists. The JAF in particular have been in continuous discussions with us and they are ready. They will expand. But what we want is to diversify our exports, not just apparel, footwear, electronic components, medical equipment manufacturing, solar panels, titanium dioxide from ilmenite, many, many things, paint, auto parts. Weighing scale paths, so we need people to come and invest. That is going to take a little bit of time. That is why I said not in the first year, but the second, third year, you'll see bigger improvements. But on the other hand, the government is providing them with that right platform they require. If they said they didn't have the right kind of incentive, the government is now giving the incentive. <laughs> Minister of Power and Renewable Energy Ranjit Siembalapitiya reiterates that the government has no intention of increasing electricity tariffs despite challenges faced by the government. The minister's remark came during a media briefing in Colombo today. We are facing a crisis. It is not only in Sri Lanka, but the entire South Asian region is facing abnormal weather conditions. As a result, the government has spent 27.5 billion to provide continuous electricity across the country. If this continues till June 2017, this amount will increase to 50 billion rupees. As a measure to lower electricity consumption in households, a cabinet paper has been passed to purchase 10 million LED bulbs. The owners of 3.5 million low-income households can obtain this facility on an installment basis of 24 months. This amount will be recovered from the electricity bill and we assure that it will not bear any additional costs. Stocks at the Colombo Bourse were higher after the close today as gains in the healthcare, information, technology and investment trust sectors led shares higher. At the close in Colombo, the CSE All Share rose 0.39% to hit a new 52-week high. Here's Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange with all the details from the trading flow. The benchmark all share price index gained 26.01 points to close at 6,718.34, while the SP Sri Lanka 20 index gained 21.89 points to close at 3,863.81. The turnover was 1.7 billion rupees, with 51.6 million shares changed in hands in 7,394 trades. Today's foreign purchases were 1.13 billion rupees, and foreign sales were 230.16 million rupees. There were nine crossings today and the crossing turnover was 1.05 billion rupees. The Sri Lankan rupee ended weaker today, led by usual imported dollar demand, but dealers said the depreciation pressure on the currency has eased on strong inflows from foreign borrowings. Rupee forwards were active with spot next forwards earning ending rather at 152 rupees to 85 to 90 cents per dollar compared with yesterday's close. One week's forwards ended at 152 rupees to 95 to 153 rupees per dollar. Let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies today. Well, exactly a year on since the Aranaika landslide in Kegal, many families are still homeless. The disaster at the Samasarakanda claimed 31 lives and left 4,000 people displaced. Displaced people from 75 families claim that their plight has not been addressed by the authorities. In addition to the deaths and displacements, the Aranaika landslide on the 17th of May last year left several people missing. The landslide completely destroyed 72 houses and 288 residences sustained partial damage. A year on from the disaster, 75 displaced families still live in temporary shelters, while several other families live with relatives in rental houses. 
We did not get anything up to now. We lost land and we asked for compensation. We asked the divisional secretariat for Samurdi. We didn't get it. 80 more houses will be distributed on the 14th of June. By the end of June, everyone who lost their houses will get new houses. Welcome back, everyone. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe, testified before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry for the seventh consecutive day today. President's Counsel Chanaka Di Silva, representing former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahindra, led the examination. Justice Prasanna Jawadna of the Commission of Inquiry questioned Deputy Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe as to why he did not take action against the decision of the Monetary Board to accept bids worth 10.8 billion rupees during the auction of the 27th of February 2015. The Deputy Governor said he had no access to information after the said bond auction. Justice Prasanna Jawadna further inquired whether it is unusual for the Governor of the Central Bank to be involved in proceedings of the Public Debt Department, to which Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe responded that he learned of Arjuna Mahindran's involvement in the PDD only after some time. Counsel Chanaka De Silva went on to question Nandalal Weerasinghe whether he broke down and cried when former CB Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral resigned from the post. Refuting the statement, the Deputy Governor said he only made an emotional speech. Counsel Chanaka De Silva further questioned the Deputy Governor if he had objected to the appointment of former chairman of Tender Board, P. Samarasiri, as an acting deputy governor when former governor Arjuna Mahendran had resigned. Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe replied that he opposed it as he was of the view that such an appointment was against the rules of the central bank. Counsel Chanaka De Silva then questioned why he did not oppose his own appointment as an acting deputy governor when Ajit Nivad Cabral resigned as governor of the central bank. Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe said that he did not oppose the decision since former Governor Cabral had more time left in office and he did not consider it illegal. Counsel De Silva further asked if Dr. Weerasinghe had, during a New Year's speech, mentioned that his resolution was to lose Arjuna Mahindran. Refuting so, Dr. Weerasinghe said his New Year wish was to restore the reputation of the central bank. Concluding his questioning, Counsel Chanaka De Silva observed that the evidence provided by Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe suggests malicious intent towards the former governor, Arjuna Mahindran. Rejecting the statement, Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe said he would have mentioned the damage made to the central bank on different occasions, but never made any statements against anyone. However, since the attention of the commission was driven towards a report which includes recommendations issued by the International Monetary Fund on how to act regarding government securities in the future, proceedings of the commission were conducted in camera, removing media and the public. On to sports now, Sri Lanka's cricket team will leave for England tomorrow morning for the ICC Champions Trophy, scheduled to commence on the 1st of June. Speaking at a media briefing today, Sri Lankan skipper Angelo Matthews stated that the team had trained hard over the past two weeks and they are up for the challenge ahead. It's time for us to uh, leave for this all-important Champions Trophy. I think we've done our preparations in Sri Lanka. had some vigorous training in Colombo as well as we had this training camp in Kandy. The intensity and the attitude was, was brilliant and I'm extremely happy with the way we practiced. The next 12 to 14 days will also be very important, especially acclimatizing in England. The whole team will um, gear up and work extremely hard for the, for the next two weeks prepared because we don't have time for hiccups and come back in especially in a tournament like this i think it isn't really a time to talk it's uh, we've got to that stage where it is about action the boys have it's now time to to get out there and really try and uh, uh, produce something special a lot has been said about the fact that we are confident and that we can go and win this tournament we've got to be realistic and accept that we we go to this tournament as as underdogs <laughs> In rugby news, Sri Lanka picked up a 33-17 win over the United Arab Emirates in their second game of the Asia Rugby Division I Championship in Malaysia today. Fa Fazil Marija, Danushka Ranjan, Lee Kigal and Jason Dasanaik all scored tries for Sri Lanka while Filina Virasinghe added 13 points with a boot with two conversions and three penalties. Sri Lanka will now face host Malaysia in the championship decider on the 20th of May. 
In IPL news, the rising Pune supergiant toppled the table-topping Mumbai Indians in the first qualifier to book themselves a spot in the 2017 IPL final. Pune's batting lineup fired on all cylinders with Ajay Rahane and Manoj Tiwari, both scoring half-centuries. After being put into bat, Pune piled on 162 for the loss of four wickets in their 20 overs, with Tiwari top scoring with 58, while Rahane stroked to well-placed 56 at the top of the order. In reply, Mumbai managed just 142 for 9 in their 20 overs, with Parthi Patel scoring 52, while the rest of the batting order failing to make an impact. 17-year-old Washington Sundar starred with the ball for Pune, picking up 3 for 16 in its 4 overs. While Pune have qualified for the finals, Mumbai will have to play the winner of today's eliminator between Hyderabad and Kolkata. In the Premier League, Manchester City and Arsenal both picked up wins last evening, taking the battle for Champions League spot uh, into the very last game. City beat West Brom 3-1, while Alexis Sanchez Brace took Arsenal into their 22nd win of the season. At the Emirates, Arsenal netted twice in the second half against Sunderland. First, when Sanchez tapped in a pass from Mesut Ozil in the 72nd minute, and nine minutes later, when he bundled in Olivier Giroud's cutback. Meanwhile, at the city of Manchester Stadium, Gabriel Jesus, Kevin De Bruyne and Yaya Toure all rattled the net for City, ensuring that a point in their final game will now be enough to guarantee Pep Guardiola's side a place in the top four and Champions League football. On to one of our headline stories, Russian President Vladimir Putin has offered to release a record of Russian officials meeting with Donald Trump, who is alleged to have passed them sensitive information. U.S. media says Trump passed on classified information last week, but Russia says this is not the case. Putin said uh, Russian records would be given to the U.S. Congress and Senate if a request was made for them. The news comes amid reports that Trump tried to influence an investigation into his team's links with Russia. Now, also more trouble brewing for President Donald Trump. As U.S. media allege, President Trump asked former FBI Director James Comey to drop an inquiry into links between his ex-national security adviser and Russia. The White House already moved to deny the allegations with the U.S. media report that James Comey penned a memo immediately after a meeting with Trump following the resignation of Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn was forced to resign in February after he misled U.S. Vice President Mike Pence about his conversations with Russia's Ambassador Sergei Kislyak before Donald Trump took office. U.S. media report that Trump met FBI Director James Comey the day after and told him, quote, I hope you can let this go, unquote. Flynn's Russian ties are under investigation by the FBI and the House and Senate Intelligence Committees as part of wider inquiries into claims Moscow sought to tip the election in favor of Donald Trump. Meanwhile, the Trump administration's search for a new FBI chief hit a roadblock yesterday as two high-profile candidates reportedly on the shortlist to replace James Comey signaled that they did not want the job. After Representative Trey Gowdy said he was not interested on Monday, advisers to Judge Merrick Garland and U.S. Senator John Cornyn of Texas told Reuters that they had been discouraged from the post given that it is fraught with politics and controversy under the current president. On to the forecast for tomorrow, fairly strong winds are forecast over the island, especially in the western slopes of the central hills, as well as in the northern and southern sea areas. In addition, showers or thunder showers will occur in the western, northwestern, Sambaragamua, southern and central provinces tomorrow. Temperatures across the island will fluctuate from a comfortable 28 to somewhat of a hot weather at 33 degrees Celsius. Now here's a look at your city by city forecast.
Well, that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than a 24-7. Other Than a News at 9 with Indi Bariyamuatha will return tomorrow. Be sure to join us then. I'm Mahish Johnny. And before we go, we have a treat for you this evening. Some rare visuals from colonial Sri Lanka where people engaging in crafting rare stones in early Ceylon's gym industry. These rare visuals were taken in 1941, even before we gained independence. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhavarana 24-7.